and uh, Brian Christensen will do the pledge. Everybody will stand, please. Our Heavenly Father, we ask that you give us guidance today with this TDC board as we work together with our community and businesses and tourism industry to accomplish our goals for the benefit of all. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, next on the agenda, let's see, we're going to call for order, and we have forum call, Art Miller. Here. Brian Christensen. Here. Kurt Tate. Here. Jim Richard. Here. Gary Brumeyer. Here. Jennifer Frost. Here. Pam Avery. Here. Cecilia Jones. Here. Tim Norris, present. Uh, we have a quorum. Okay, next, uh, before I pass the gavel to Commissioner Jones, our new chair, I want to make uh, a brief statement um, to the board. We all received a, uh, an email from different sources and uh, I just want to let you know that this email was sent to us all in, in, it's erroneous, first of all, it's not true. I never refused to sign the letter that was supposed to be sent to the state for the audit. Uh, the TDC board approved this audit unanimously back in October and the BCC approved it in December. So in the meantime, as you know, we have a lot of, uh, we have a new, well, we have an interim director we have some employees that have uh, have left the TDC, and uh, it's been the holiday season, so it's it's created a you know maybe a in between all this there was a, probably a lack of communication for me to come <coughs> out and sign this. Now, on another hand, on the other hand, it was uh, it's an unusual circumstance for this board, especially the chair to sign a document that the BCC approves. This is the first time this has ever happened. So it's a little confusing to some of the, I guess, staff also. But with that being said, uh, this letter has been signed. It has been sent to Tallahassee. So we want to let everybody know and thank all of you for all your efforts. And, and thank you for allowing me to be your chairman these last couple of years. So again, uh, thanks again, and that's uh, that's all I want to say. I will now pass the gavel to our new chair, Commissioner Cecilia Jones. Thank you, and thank you, Tim, for serving, and you've done a, an awesome job, and um, we're just so grateful that that you've been willing to serve. Thank and uh, with that in mind, we'll go on to public comments. Does anyone have a comment on something on the agenda? Uh, Dave. Good 
morning, council members. David Kramer for the record. Sorry to see you gone, Tim. Um, Madam Chairman, I had a question about the uh, chairmanship since it was an election of officers on the agenda this evening um, or this morning. I wanted to know, uh, since it was an appointment, I guess it's an appointment by the BCC of your chairmanship, if there, if it was an, what I didn't understand, whether it was an interim appointment until the election of officers today and there'll be a re-election of your position or whether your position was uh, for one year or for lifetime. It was, was unclear at the vote at the BCC, so I wanted to know if the council could straighten that out for me and maybe the public of whether this or not was a interim position that was just taken until elections were happened today. So that was my question. And, and I would say I hope it's not for a lifetime. But, um, but I didn't know what it was, and it, yes. it seemed open-ended at the vote, and I didn't know for what term it was, if it was interim, whether it was for one year, whether it was right. what it was. And if you could clear that for sure. myself and the public, Absolutely. certainly appreciate it. Um, Thank you. We, we had um, a, a meeting, a regular BCC meeting, and uh, I was nominated to be chair, and I said, of course, there's other commissioners that have uh, territory down here and you know I didn't want to take that position if they wanted to do it so they all still wanted me to do it and and you know I don't live down here now full-time but I do go to church down here I do have stakes I do I you know I love South Walden and and I support the TDC so I think I'm well qualified and then the bylaws say that the Commission can actually appoint a chair and you know they they appointed me for that now if anyone has a problem with me being chair I don't mind giving it up you know if someone wants to you know today if someone wants somebody else wants to do it Tim I would <laughs> you want to continue I don't have a problem with that I um, you know so that's kind of how this evolved I, I know that letter that came out said that I you know demanded being chair and demanded being you know listen no uh, so anyway I'm, I'm just glad to serve I'll do the best I can I've not ever been a chair before but I'm willing to learn. So uh, with that said, is that kind of clear your concerns that day? Yeah, just ma'am, I think mm -hmm. just one thing, I just wanted to know the term of the appointment, if you could clear that up for me. I assume it's a year, Tim, one year, year, year. Two, one year. Thank you. Okay, any other comments? Moving on to approval of the minutes uh, for December 1st, 2015. Do we have any changes or revisions? Okay. To approve. We have a motion and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Like sign? Okay. And now we're ready for Melissa Thomason to do the financial report. Thank you, Melissa. And you really work hard for the county. I appreciate you. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. First, um, I'd like to look at the budget in brief. And I believe since your packets went out, we were able to get December numbers. So I'll be able to, to brief you on the first quarter of the fiscal year. One item that I would like to go ahead and mention is that the beach renourishment, the loan that was taken out back in 2006, it was paid in full with the December payment. So that, that one is through. Um, to look at the reserves, Total reserves are just over 53 million at the end of December. The total revenues for the year net of the Commission on Collections were $2,150,762 as of December 31st. For the first quarter of fiscal year, and I'm sorry, it looks like I was, looks like I'm going in a different order than the slideshow. Here we go. In the, um, for the first quarter of fiscal year 2016, we're at 11.29% of the total budgeted revenues. As a point of reference, the revenues for the first quarter of 2015 were 11.47% of the overall budgeted revenues for the year. So as far as the budget goes, we're tracking where we normally would. To go back to the slide that Y'all were on that shows the monthly collection. There we go. And I apologize. It's not on the same page. December collections were $534,048. That was an increase of 12.31% over December of 2014. 
Total collections for the first quarter of fiscal year 2016 were $2,217,280. That was an increase of 14.43% over the prior year. And this is just a overview. So if you have any questions or if you would like any more detailed information, just please let me know. Any questions of the board? Mm, that's good. Mm -hmm. Do we have a motion to approve the financial report? So moved. Second. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, under new business, the election of TDC officers, would the board like to move forward with the vice chair, a secretary, or treasurer? Or would, you know, it's, I serve at your pleasure, so if you would like to do the chair, I have no problems with it. Move, move forward with the vice chair. Okay. Do I, have I nominate one? Gary Bromiris for vice chair. Well, we're doing this. We're not doing the silent one, I guess. No. Okay. Second. Second. Any right. other nominations? Or are we? Uh, if we if we only have one, we're not doing it. You know, if we need a ballot, we have a ballot. But if I'm, there's I'm, two. I'm not going to vote. I just thought we had the ballot. But. We we have the ballot in case there's two, and y'all want to do it. Um, you know, by ballot. If not, we can do it openly. I mean, if you're the only one, we can, you know, any other nominations? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Gary, you didn't even oppose yourself. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just, and, okay, thank you. Um, now, the secretary, now, I, I assume, Jennifer, uh, mm -hmm. would you like to continue or? Okay. Uh, any, anybody opposed, Jennifer, continuing? Nope. Okay. Great. All right. We need, do we need a motion to take her another year? <coughs> yes. So moved. Okay. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any, any opposed? And then, Art, would you consider being treasurer again? I would. Okay. Anybody else that would like to do it? No? Okay. So. I'd like to nominate Pam Avery if she would like. Um, no, thank you. Okay. Okay. All in favor of Art Miller's? Art Miller for treasurer? Aye. Any opposed? Okay. So we have a new slate of officers. Uh, the next thing on the agenda is a request for a recommendation to the BCC to fund <coughs> landscaping for the East Corridor Improvements Project in the amount of $95,632. Um, do we have someone from the audience that will speak? Lee? Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. Lee Moore, M-O-O-R-E. Um, we're back. Um, it's been a little Excuse while. Excuse me, Lee? Yes. I, I, I want to interrupt you for one reason. I remember about a year ago you presenting this, and I think I was the only one that said I was opposed to it. And after looking at it, reviewing it, thinking about it, and thank God I'm not a true politician, so I can't change my mind, <laughs> and I am saying I, I think it's spot on. It enhances the enhance our community and our, our county so well thank you Gary. just wanted to say that for the record so great appreciate it thank you very and much I'd like, i just add too when you're coming from bay county you can always tell when you come into walden county and, and especially from okaloosa because y'all have done a great job so with that said go ahead with your presentation thank you <laughs> appreciate it very much we're excited about it we'd love for it to be moving a lot faster than it is but you know how these things go and i think my understanding we're back um i i presented actually um, in the spring that we didn't need as much funding as you originally approved for the landscaping. And apparently, I, I think you all need to take some formal action on that, that has come back up. And so that's why we're back. If you recall, you originally approved $200,000 for the landscaping for this, for this project. And um, subsequent to that, uh, a change was made and the developers um, are, well, we're funding the landscaping on US 98 privately versus publicly. And so that reduced the amount, overall amount of money we would need for the landscaping. And so that's why we're back. So you have, you, you got the new budget and all that. So you have the new budget in front of you where it was 200,000, it's now uh, the 95 and some change. Uh, and so I probably need a little help from staff, but I think we just need an approval for the reduction in that funding amount. Do we have any questions, Lee, in discussion? Um, do we have a motion to accept this amount? We like for, you know, the 
less money coming in. So. I'll make it. <laughs> Thank you. I second okay. it. Okay. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you, Lee. Thank you very much. I appreciate your support. Next on the agenda, we have a recommendation by the marketing committee that staff research options regarding updating local water towers with outdated visit South Walden branding. Thank you, John. Good morning, John Irvin. Uh, appreciate you taking some time this morning. Uh, in fact, Mr. Miller, uh, it's been, I think, a robust nine months probably since you asked about water towers, but we promised an update. Did a little digging back four years and some paperwork. Uh, chatted with the marketing committee at our last session about the fact that we have outdated brand marks uh, on display in two water towers in South Walton. So you have a little one-cheater that has some of the uh, details and the marketing committee did make a unanimous direction that we um, proceed to look for solutions regarding that mark that's prominently displayed in the county. Uh, the committee also offered commentary that uh, the substantial amount of ongoing efforts and the investments that have been made to date are no small thing and this uh, awareness is an important subject to rectify. So uh, it is an unbudgeted, however, uh, task and so being in front of you today to update you on this situation and uh, perhaps get a recommendation uh, from you about the subject or some feedback about the subject. Yes, sir. Kirk, you can well, I, I, I'm just reading here that, that, that so much was paid, like on this tower, and then it's 14000 to redo it. Is, is that what we're talking about? There's really two issues. Um, again, we haven't talked to the vendor that would actually do the work. It's, it's been four years. Uh, there was a clause written uh, four years ago that says if touch-up needed to occur to the actual logo itself, that that cost would be relatively minimal, 14,000. Um, however, uh, if you know that water tower, it is a, a very comprehensive color from top to bottom that is sort of an off tan or a, a buck color, which does not fit any of our uh, brand standards to date. So the question would be, even if we were looking for the most feasible option, could you make just the uh, live space, is what we would call it, um, into a new logo and make that water tower look presentable? And I think there's some pretty significant doubts about that. Um, but it's one of the things that the marketing committee did want to find more about as we went forward. John, when you say live space, I'm assuming the writing's attached. Before the Literally, yeah, where the <clears throat> blue ink is, if you will, on the, on the small picture that you have in front of us. And that would have been a touch-up is essentially how it would have been looked at. Again, we're dealing with electrostatic resistant paint, homeland security because of the nature of the thing. So it's not a normal circumstance. John, when this contract was let back in 2012, was, was there a term on it? How many years was the $144,000? From everything that I've been able to find and read, it, it um, basically read open-ended to me that the decision was made. The investment really was based on that if we were fortunate, the paint might be suitable for 10 years. And so that I think it was casually inferred that, well, you know, 144000 for 10 years is approximately a $14,000 investment. But it was not dictated that at some point the rights to be there expired with that payment. It, it could not find that. I mean, it seems incomprehensible that someone would have a contract in perpetuity. You could have your name up there forever for $144,000. Uh, I've tried to talk to the people at South Walton Utility. They don't seem to understand it either. Yeah, we're um, dealing with some ancient history in some respects now, but we're trying to figure out a way to go forward because I don't believe there's anything about that mark currently that's helping or supporting the issues of local businesses or this organization or mm -hmm. the county in general. So, um, Is it true there's only one company that does this work? There was a sole source situation with regional utilities because of the permitting, the information that we received because of the permitting and the Homeland Security permissions and the protocols that had to be followed. It's South Walton Utility, not regional utility. Sorry, sorry, yes, thank you. So does it, uh, so do we need an RFP? It would go through a, a whole county process if, um, you know, if your uh, feedback is that staff should continue to look for resolutions and we would probably have to be back again 
with some further steps. But again, we were being very cautious because it was an unbudgeted item. So the question would be why is staff looking for solutions or considering options if it's an unbudgeted item? <coughs> I've spoken with Mike Flint, who's the chairman of South Walton Utility, and, and uh, the way he remembers it was that the prior executive director, before Jim Bagby, uh, approached him about doing this, mm -hmm. and they, they let, or they uh, came to an agreement on what it would be. And uh, after the check was, was uh, submitted to them, they then went ahead and contracted with people to paint it. So the Correct. TDC had nothing to do with letting a contract for painting. That was done by South Walton Utility. Okay. So I, I assume the same thing would happen here. You'd have to go to South Walton Utility and say, we want yes. to change the logo. But let me also add, uh, since I drive by that thing every day, uh, I have to say I think it's a total waste to have a name up there. Um, I think that $144,000 was a total waste of money. Uh, not only because it was script, but because the, the water tower is so high, the road is so close to it, you really have to be in a convertible to see it. Uh, and I don't see that we get any real value out of it. Now, should we let it stay with the old logo? Probably not. But, but I question whether or not it has any real value for us at all. Now, with the other one, the water tower, which I assume is on right here on 301 yes, across the street, that's different. I think that's much more visible to, the, to someone driving by. And I would, I would be in favor of doing something with that one. But the one, uh, it's none of my business, but it seems to me that if anybody's going to put a logo on that, it ought to be Sandestin, not South Walton. But <clears throat> um, I just don't see any value to be gained in, in spending more money to paint it. Many moons ago, I think it was green and beige and Sandestin logo. Right. If I can remember. Tim, do you have something Let to say? Let me ask this, uh, Madam Chairman. Um, John, on this, so what, what is the, we're just trying to figure out what to do with it. Somebody asked to do something with it because I would leave it alone because Visit South Walton is our website, correct? Visit South Walton? Yeah. It, just a different phone. From a technical it's standpoint, that is an improper brand use and should be retired and. and that's re okay. That's, so. That's the answer to my question. Yeah. Okay, so what do we want to do? Put a logo up there or not anything at all? Well, uh, again, depending on the, uh, you know, uh, opinions of the board and eventually BCC with an expenditure, I would assume, um, to, uh, to Mr. Miller's point, you could p potentially exercise the 14,000 touch-up paint job to obscure it and leave it a blank, and then you haven't caused brand confusion. Uh, I would say that has a responsible approach. But another person could say, if you're going to go to all that trouble and you're going to have vendors up there, that over a potentially clarified 10-year term, $14,000 a year for something that's that prominent is not unusual in the greater region. And we even gave you a couple snapshots of other ones. Now, yeah. well, I agree with Mr. proximities Miller. is a different situation I with mean, this tower. You can't see it anyway. Why waste any more money on it if we have to take it out because, it's, you know, because the brand's no yeah. longer there? And, you know, is it, is it even in need of painting? I, I, uh, I kind of like water towers and, I, you know, anywhere you go, you kind of yeah. go, oh, Baker and Laurel Hill, they all kind of have their own distinct, if you remember the Destin Put Tower. Put all their name on it. Right. Yeah. But, again, one, it's not, one, it's not been budgeted. We can plan for it in the future if we want. And, and then, two, um, if it doesn't need painting, why, why, why do it? Especially it's, if it's, it's not the wrong, It's the wrong brand. Yeah, so that's the only reason. And, and I think okay. that it should not be the old brand. Um, however, I am curious about one thing. This is a unanimous recommendation by the marketing committee. I'd like to understand, and you're on marketing committee, I'd like to understand how they see the water tower branding differently than they see um, transportation branding because I think the marketing committee's comments were um, that people are already here. So we don't need branding up and down the street. We don't need branding on a water tower. So I'm just curious as to how they made that distinction. I, I don't believe that uh, that's the overall consensus. I think that in-market branding has a, been a big topic. And I personally believe in in-market branding. Um, this is, I think the next step with this is to find out what the actual costs are going to be because we're talking about stuff that we don't really have good information on right now. Uh, I do believe that our branding should be consistent throughout, whether it's removed or left in place. And I, again, I am in favor of 
in market branding, I think that the proposals for the trolleys is excessive. I think it's a great idea, but the amount of money they want for the project is it is excessive, and I think that's where the problem lies. Okay. Well, I just wanted to be clear. Because I, we've made, we've money, moved forward with uh, with billboards and mm -hmm. and some other in market yeah. branding that is a more you know effective use of dollars. Yeah. Or a more reasonable use of dollars is probably the right word. I don't support spending money this way either. I agree with Art. Yeah, I, I, I don't think it's a. Problem. And I would agree too, particularly when you basically spend 144 for a 10 year project and you only use four of it. That just to me says, wait a minute, we, this may not be the best place to be putting the money. Um, so I agree with that too. But would, would the board want it covered up the one down at. Um, the, the regional utilities one, I'm mean, not the regional, South Walden utilities. Or, or am I hearing that we want that one covered up, maybe to direct staff to cover, maybe cover that one up and then price the other one? And the other one I would expect. Mm -hmm. 331. Let me, let me ask the question. Even the one that's down here, but across the street, yes. how many of us really noticed that when we drive by? Well, it's kind of covered with a tree, partially covered with a tree. So why would we spend money on doing that one, too? Yeah. Well, if you did, I would recommend that, again, you remove the tree. i tell you what, maybe not even, yeah. I think we need to do what we did on the east end of the county, 2, 331. That's our main through fare. And if we're going to do it now, kind of, maybe that's off track a little bit, but if you're talking about brand new, Relative. Well, yeah. somebody in the county. Mm -hmm. That would be the place to do it, you know, the new bridge and all that. Now, again, would that be in the budget for this year? No, but we can certainly plan ahead because that's going to cost more than fourteen thousand or one hundred forty-four. Yeah. So. Well, this this water tank here is no. is the entrance to yes. the to South Walton with the new bridge, and when that project is, you're going to see a, a lot more traffic coming over, and it is. I see it every day. I live in the North County, so I drive by it at least twice every day and I, I notice it. Yeah, I see it, I see it every day too and I think it, it's worthwhile just because it's the interest to sell well, at least to get pricing on it and let's talk about it. I, I, I'm not saying we have to go forward with it, but I think we should let them go get pricing on that one. John, do you have a price on the South Walt, the uh, 331? Very modest. The last time we did that, it was somewhere between six and $7,000. Again, you don't have to have the you know, air the elevated crews. And if I'm not mistaken, which I could be, I believe that all of this, when we were discussing rebranding, that all of these items were addressed in the rebranding package. They were. And that you know, they should all be addressed. If we're going to spend the money to change our whole brand that we should go ahead and change the whole brand whether they're removed or updated one of the two but we shouldn't have inconsistent branding in the market um one of the it's um well that's as far as the landscape goes that would have to make that would have to be done to make a difference so you could really see it because you really can't see it very much gary can go cut we know we know the towers there and we see it but how many tourists does that sees that when they come in it's lit at night too, isn't it? 331, the base unit? Yeah. I think there is up lighting. There is up lighting. I'm pretty sure even at night, I'm not 100% positive. I think it's just okay. I guess from a creative standpoint, one of the things that I, I would want us to work on is if landscaping can't be changed and is going to continue to grow, we do need to ask ourselves if positioning in the live space on there would be done different to uh, try to use the upper sections. And so, again, the the cost of that per eyes is pretty low uh, that so that one isn't a really difficult risk-taking decision in my opinion Thanks. so I guess our pleasure is to direct board to give us more information pricing and so forth we'll keep trying to uh, come up with a couple of good actionable plans then from, from what I'm hearing yeah and and I would appreciate knowing something about where South Walton utilities uh, stands in all of this because as I said I've talked with the chairman and, yep. and it's kind of a mystery to him as to this where this whole thing stands he, the only thing he knew was that someone had made an inquiry uh, uh, from the TDC their operations manager said that he was willing to work with us and to revisit the process and right. so Great. but before we got you know waist deep in it we wanted to have exactly this conversation right. so. uh, let me uh, th this is a little bit uh, off this topic but since you brought it up or it was brought up about uh, the um, branding of the trolleys or the trams uh, for those that weren't at the last BCC or the previous BCC 
uh, the people from South Walt from uh, Sunshine Shuttle did make a presentation. Uh, you may recall at our last TDC meeting the subject of uh, whether or not the, this could be done legally was brought up and the suggestion was made that first the BCC would have to give legislative approval to spend money on it. Uh, somehow that got mistranslated and at the BCC the people from Sunshine Shuttle made a two million dollar presentation. Uh, how they went from you need to get a legislative approval to the BCC or the TDC approved this $2 million plan is a big stretch. And I just want everybody to know that that, that was done and it was, it was not approved by the BCC, uh, fortunately. And I do believe our uh, executive director will revisit that in his updates. I Good. do feel compelled to um, add regarding that subject that the last time that uh, the marketing committee was addressed with a, with a proper presentation, they chose to not take any action, I think, as you probably recall, but did invite a return uh, from any vendor who wanted to make a marketing proposal. And there was efforts made twice to help facilitate that, but to date we have not received a marketing proposal at the marketing committee level. Mm -hmm. and, I, and, I, and to I, get us back on track, yes, uh, and, and those comments are, thank you very much. We might want to do those in council comments next time. Well, well only because he, it was brought up okay. and it's okay. related okay. to branding. Right, moving right along. A request recommendation to the BCC to approve the updated brand activation at Music City Food and Wine Festival within existing budgeted funds. Yes, and there's an uh, error on here. I didn't see it till this morning. I'm so sorry where it talks about total cost uh, with request and $9,100. That is an error. There actually is no change to any funding mechanism, any budget. Uh, this has been long uh, established a year ago and through the whole process. The change, and I don't want to minimize it, but the change is literally to the description that uh, at one point talked about Chicago Blogger and we were unable to sufficiently plan with the staff and the time that we had. Um, we have been to Nashville uh, Food and Wine. Actually, Mr. Richard was <coughs> with us on that um, brand activation. It was uh, exceptional in many ways, and so with the proper time to plan and the proper budget here, we're asking to change the description in the planning. because That is the extent of the ask. Any comments from the board? Is the cost associated the same as this? Last year, total cost was uh, in the mid-90s for everything, all sponsorship, all travel, drayage, all things. So we have an excess of that in the current budget. And our next step will be to start line item, uh, item savings. We actually hope there would be enough uh, contingency and monies to uh, bring back another possibility. We, we've been fortunate to already participate with the Chicago train wrap again this year uh, through Visit Florida program. And so we're under budget to date, and we, we expect to continue to be under budget. Thank you. Do we have a motion to approve? I have a motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Thank you for that. Thank you, John. Okay. Brian, we have a request for TDC approval of staff selected candidate Philip Helmstone's yes, application. Good morning. Um, just in kind of reviewing this, I and I want to make sure we're following procedures. If we have uh, someone initially, then I feel like we should probably advertise and seek other applications as well. And I, I don't even know this gentleman. He might do, and he might end up getting it. But I want to just make sure that we follow those procedures. So okay. could we just take a step back and maybe advertise that we have a vacancy on this committee and um, move forward? Is, are you in agreement? Yeah. With, is that okay with you? Yes, ma'am. We can okay. do that if that's your wishes. Okay. All right. Is, mm -hmm. that, you, does everybody understand what we're talking about? Mm -hmm. Okay. Commissioner Jones, wouldn't that be with all the committees that we have with the marketing committee, the, the CEO forum, this committee here? Mm -hmm. We've got several of these committees. That's, this is the same type of yeah. zoning, right? Right. Actually, right. the uh, the uh, bylaws of the committees allow for a vacant position to be uh, appointed as we're doing today. But uh, if it's the wishes of the ch uh, Madam Chairman that she would like to uh, advertise for this, then I'm right. all for that. We want to make sure we have the best person on there. Uh, at our previous meeting, we have approved the uh, candidates that had applied uh, and then were recommended for approval. Mm -hmm. And at that time, we announced that we had one vacant position and that we would fill it within the uh, rules of the committee. But uh, if it's uh, would make everybody feel better, we can uh, step back, advertise this, and make sure everybody that uh, uh, would like to participate has the opportunity. Uh, it would also give any 
residents of the county to be able to participate in any one of these committees also, correct? Pardon me? It would also, if we advertise it, uh, give an opportunity for anyone in the county? Correct. That, that is a resident? Right. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, and that meets the requirements of right. the, uh, the uh, charter. Right, and there might be more interest and there might not. I, I know, you know, historically yes, we've had a hard time getting volunteers, but I hope we can yeah. change that. We had a little bit of a, a challenge on, on this committee. I'm not sure why. Uh, you know, this committee was really consumed with HSDR last year mm -hmm. and didn't get into other aspects that they're charged with uh, uh, improving. So uh, I think that might have been part of the, the reason why there weren't many applicants. Uh, but uh, this year, you know, uh, we plan on taking more, taking on more than just HSDR. We're going to take on the full charter of our, uh, what we're supposed to be doing. So, uh, but yeah, but we can do that uh, if that's the wishes. Uh, I guess we uh, just need to step back. And, and Chairwoman, if, if I may interject there, just so we understand what I think some of the confusion has come up for. The process states in both initial applications and in vacancy applications, the executive director will solicit the industry for any member positions to fill and to fill vacated seats. And then upon termination or resignation, says the executive director will then solicit the industry and or community for additional nominations to fill the vacated seat. What that actually contemplates has never been spelled out. Certainly it could mean the executive director sending an advertisement, could be the executive director going to the round tables he hosts to the CEOs, could be a number of different things. But there is no specific policy one way or the other. So uh, I would think for the board's edification, you can certainly do it either as Brian suggested with, okay, this is who we brought back to you, but it contemplates there will be some solicitation of nominees in some way. So whichever way you do it, I think we do need to be consistent. That is across all committees. You are correct to the member who brought that up. But so certainly what that solicitation looks like, either it be in the form of advertisement <coughs> or in a recommendation back from the executive director, I think is how we're going to probably have to follow it in both instances. Okay. So in the spirit of consistency, which what's the pleasure? Would you like to do it by uh, advertising or would you just like to give the prerogative to the executive director? I'd like to ask a question. Um, we're right uh, staring in the face of the season. Um, mm -hmm. how, if this is going to put you in that because mm -hmm. we only meet every other month. Yes, ma'am. Is that going uh, to be a problem? It won't present that big of a problem. We operated last year with a slight deficiency in members uh, in both committees that I'm li liaison in. Uh, so uh, I really would like to do what the board wishes to, you know, to do. Uh, like I say, this, this committee is an advisory committee uh, to, to staff and to the Tourist Development Council. So we, we will make sure we have the right people and make sure everybody has the opportunity yeah. to do it. I think it's important to fill every position now in preparation for season, and, hmm? and especially the TDC director. However, going forward after this, I think we need to have it available to have the time so that the locals and the county right. have the opportunity to serve if they would like. But I, I, mm -hmm. right now, there's a big sense of urgency of we're already a little bit behind in general, and I want to, I want to get on board. So for for the record, how, what is the current standard for filling vacancies? Uh, well, I think Kelly just just defined that, and that right. is. The, the, That's the, right. The, the vacancy standard is filled the same way a normal seat has. Um, I read both sections under membership nomination and approval process. Says the executive director will solicit the industry for any members any membership positions in DeVille vacated seats. When we deal with an issue of a specific resignation, there's an additional clause that reads very similarly, but slightly different. It says, should a resignation of a committee member occur, the executive director will then solicit the industry and or community for additional nominations to fill the vacated seat. So arguably you could expand it outside of the industry to fill that. Um, I could sit here and read a lot more into that than what's there. The simple fact is I think you have the discretion of how to operate under that. And I'm not going to sit here and suggest what the proper policy there. You can do it either way legally. So, so if the executive director looked at the applicants and brought back a recommendation at the next meeting, would that uh, put you in a bad spot at all? I mean, could no, you ma'am. Like I said, we operated last year with, you know, not a full board on both of my committees for certain periods okay. of time. Uh, the rest of the members step up and, and you know, we make you know, decisions, discussions and all that. 
Uh, one deficit for one person deficit for two months is not going to put me in a bind. I believe I saw Miss Harris's hand up. Would you come up, please? I guess for procedures, I need to just ask a question, Cecilia. When y'all discuss something and you make a motion and a thing, you haven't been asking, are there any comments from the public? Are we going to get to comment between sure, the each end thing? Of the meeting, okay, well, then I'd like to first go back to the brand. I don't know how many brands we've had in five years, but um, we've had probably five brands in at least eight years. So before we jump around changing water towers to a new brand, you might consider being sure this brand is going to last more than just a short time because we're going to get a new director in. I just saw the new Panama City brand. It is absolutely gorgeous, and you can see it, and it's colorful, and it sticks out. Just be sure you're going to keep this brand before we go spend a whole bunch of money on it, and then two years down the road, we've got a new brand. Um, on this right here, uh, the way he's presenting it is the way it's been being done for the two or three three years, four years that I've been coming. So since this guy obviously has been recommended and his name's on the thing and he's probably here today and he's already said he would accept it if he got it, it seems to me we could go ahead and fill this one since we have somebody anxious to do it and he's been vetted by our own TDC and brought to y'all that he could do it and then if you want to change the policy from now on, then we change the policy then. But it's kind of, it looks kind of funny to go out and solicit people and then tell somebody we're going to recommend you and then go, oops, well, we, want, we, we probably don't want to recommend you. So you're, it seems like you're going to keep people from wanting to apply because they say, well, what if we get re recommended? And then we get up there, and then they say, well, they don't want us. They want to change the rules just to keep us from getting on. So that's my only thing. That, that's kind of what I was alluding to is that since this gentleman was recommended, we do it this process. If we are going to change it, we change it for the next. So. I have a question. Brian, did, yes, did, you, did we send this out on email or a public notice? Because I know for the Mark other committees, they did. Was this how this guy applied? Well, we initially did that at the end of the 2014-2015 tenure for mm -hmm. that committee. Mm -hmm. We solicited uh, via email uh, publications, uh, websites for applicants. So there was a public notice sent out yes, how this person applied. Okay. Well, well, that answers at, my question. At, let so. me finish. Uh, okay. So uh, at the end of that uh, solicitation period, we did not have enough applicants to fill all the slots. And so after we, we approved the ones that we did, uh, either reappointments or new appointments, and I made the comment or, or made the statement that we had one vacancy that we would fill and come back to the you know, county commission, I mean the uh, TDC for approval of that appointment. Uh, so was this application in the initial? Uh, no, ma'am, it was not. Like I say, it was, it was the vacant position. Right. And, 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 uh, and my question too is, did the executive director, were you involved in this stand in the decision making? And I, you know, again, I don't have a. I just want to make sure that I follow the, you know, the letter the intent of our procedures. Stan. Brian. Brian spoke directly with uh, this individual, and Brian, I think what they're asking you is, how did this individual come to apply for the vacancy? Yes. Yeah. It, well, like I say, uh, it was encouraged that we include a beach uh, vendor mm -hmm. on this committee. Uh, they would fall under the F type ap applicant. And uh, so uh, I uh, researched who I felt would make a good contributor to this board. Uh, and I felt that a person to do that would be somebody that is proactive in the industry, uh, is a resident of Walton County, is owner of the company, and does both type of vending, delivery and specific place vending, which uh, Mr. Poundstone meets all those requirements. And Mr. Poundstone is one of the few uh, vendors that have actually called me or contacted me in a proactive uh, way to say, how can we make sure that we're not running afoul of beach uh, uh, related codes and how can we help make this industry better? Uh, he's recognized the struggle we've had over the last couple of years uh, with the growth of the industry, the uh, increased number of visitors to our beach, the increased congestion on our beach. And uh, so that's how I came to, uh, I had a few other candidates that I thought uh, 
would, would be uh, good contributors to the board. Uh, and after review of all of them, uh, uh, Mr. Poundstone. Uh, so there was other applicants? That well, there was other people that I had considered. Right, uh, but no applications. No. no. Brian, any, any other comments? Sure. Sure. Brian, uh, yes, to the best of your knowledge, is this gentleman related to anybody, any public official in the county? I do not believe he is. Mr. Poundstone is here if, if you would like to ask him direct questions. Uh, I don't believe he's rated anybody uh, as far as commissioners or anybody. He's, uh, and you know, know, in Walden County, just about everybody in the north is related, so I don't see that that's really really an issue. If he's willing to serve, uh, I'd just like to kind of look. Where are you, yeah. Mr. Poundsley? Mr. Poundsley, you stand up. Uh, hey, thank you. Thank you. My question, Mr. Chairman, is um, all right, he's willing to serve? Yes, sir. All right. And uh, there's no other applications. I mean, you felt like this was a perfect candidate for it at this point in time. How many empty seats do you have on this committee? Nine seats. Nine, you have nine seats and you only have one vacancy. Yes, sir. So this will help you complete what you need to get completed. Yes, sir. I recommend that we go ahead and approve Mr. Poundstone. I second that. Yes. Okay. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Like so. Thank you very much. Uh, just to make sure in the future we don't have any other complications, do we want to uh, address the issue of how uh, vacancies are appointed? I think if we advertise at the beginning of the season mm -hmm. and then if anyone, you know, one becomes vacant, then, you know, if the old process has been working and it follows, the, you know, our procedures, I, I'm fine with that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, right thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, moving right along, we have um, director's update. Nope, oh, old business. Taylor Engineering. Are you Mr. Trammell? Yes, ma'am. Commissioner, council members, appreciate you having me. Uh, just a very brief update on the HSDR project. Uh, this past weekend was our uh, the last days for the easements to be returned. It was January 30th and January 31st, depending on the area in which. Thousand. Right. I don't have it either. It's on the agenda, not on the agenda. Before I forget, I received a friendly reminder to uh, unmute your mic when you ask questions from someone there in the back. <laughs> um, so we did just receive the, uh, I, my hats off to Sydney and everyone at the um, a, a county attorney's office. Uh, they really worked hard yesterday to get all those easements updated uh, over the over the weekend and yesterday. We don't have the final numbers, but we do have is, um, some preliminary numbers we worked through yesterday afternoon to present. Uh, in total, we've received about half of the responses back. Um, of that 50%, and it right is within a percent right at 50. Um, of those numbers, approximately 10% are in favor of the project, and 90% uh, are opposed to the project or opposed to establishing that easement. Um, so we're, we're forwarding that information over to the core. We're still going to do some further QA analysis with the, uh, the county's office, with AGS, and then also preparing some additional metrics that will be put into a final package and presented to the BCC. We expect this to happen within the next few weeks. We're targeting the March 8th uh, BCC meeting. Um, we're hoping we can meet that. If not, we'll certainly send out uh, the proper updates. Uh, the other, the only other item I had was the vibra coring within the offshore borrow source. There was the concern of the sand quality. The county had submitted that uh, RF or ITB um, in November of last year. We we have received a number of questions. There is interest in that project, and that bid will close February 8th, of which we will compile uh, the results with county staff and present that to the BCC for final action. So, if there's any questions, I'll be happy to answer. Any questions, board? Thank you very much. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, next we have uh, Zender Communications. Oh, wait, wait, just a minute, please, ma'am. Do we have some comments, Mr. Hudson? Thank you, Ch Chairman Jones. Uh, just a point of clarification: the numbers that were there came out this morning through uh, Sydney. Uh, and they are what they are, uh, but it was my understanding that any unreturned easements would be counted as no. That was my understanding as well. So it's about 1,100 
no's and about 69 yeses at this point in time. So I just want to make sure that that, that was true because I'm going to distribute that to our membership. That's how I read it. Mm -hmm. I don't know if anybody else can answer but that's Um, I'll clarify that. That is the, uh, from the Corps of Engineers' perspective, they cannot record an easement that has not been returned. Right. Thank you. Okay. Any, anyone else would like to speak to this issue before we have Zender? Okay. Hi. Hi. Pretty dress. I am Jennifer Benino, Director of Account Service with Zender, and I am here to provide you guys a highlight on the marketing activities for December 2015 and January 2016. We'll start with media. Um, our co-op program continues to do really well for us. We're seeing strong numbers at the close of December. Um, our partners are doing really well there. Or our monthly sweeps program is also continuing to be a great source of leads for us. Um, we have over 3,400 new leads just alone in December and 4,500 subscribers and then another 7,000 requests for the visitor guide. So that continues to be a strong lead generator. Um, Excuse our me, Jennifer, can I interrupt you and pull a Gary Brohmeyer here? Is there anything, have you given us anything here at all that we're supposed to be looking at? I don't see anything here in my book. No, no, no just, a, right. just, right, just, just a highlight. Sorry. Yeah. No worries. Um, our media team um, is always looking for opportunities to get us in high-end brand publications. So this is just a snapshot of some of those, Southwest Magazine, Oxford American, and a new publication, Afar, which um, has a very high household income of 250000 plus. Um, so we are in the January, February issue of Where to Go. This is really targeted towards national, international travel. So a great opportunity there. Um, we are also always looking at under the radar approaches to meet um, or to get on the radar of our meeting planners. And so this is a new opportunity that we've been working with the sales team on. Um, we worked closely with them to pinpoint meetings, trade shows that they are either going to be attending or that they want to have a present that and they can't attend. And so what we do is we geofence our banner ads to attendees of these conferences. So anyone within a 0.25 mile radius of this conference is going to get their banner ad on our, our banner ad on their phone. And then that has a strong call to action links back to our meetings section of the website. Um, again, our media team is always working to get you guys added value, so we're always looking for a one-to-one -one match for every dollar spent. We want to get one more of free value. So we're already um, exceeding $2 million in added value, which represents about 56% of our net media spend, which is fabulous. Um, our digital co-op program, which is our banner program, obviously is doing very well. You can see that each of our partners has far surpassed their click goals for this program. So that's the banner advertising in places like Southern Living, um, you know, Southwest, all of those places where we can give them another opportunity to get their message out there. Um, we know that mobile continues to be a really lead channel for travelers particularly. So we want to watch this closely. Um, our most recent effort in this space is to do branded Visit South Walton backgrounds on weather.com. It has performed extremely well. Um, the average click-through rate for the industry is about 0.26. We're at 0.46. So really good performance there. Um, SEM, which are Google AdWord campaign. So any AdWords that we're putting out there, which we want to be recognized for. Again, well above industry average there. Um, our reserve spending, so as you know, we deploy a percentage of those funds to promote shoulder season and emerging markets. And we do this via our TV spots and our lifestyle videos. And those run um, everywhere from Hulu to Southwest in flight to Boingo, airport Wi Fi, um, YouTube. Again, a uh, great opportunity to get our content in front of those potential visitors. 
On the creative front, um, we talked about the Chicago train takeover. As you know, we did that last year. We also did that again this year. Um, we got some added value with that initiative this year where we get to have kiosks along six stations of the tollway where there's an opportunity to brand the kiosk with a Visit South Walton background. There's a 15 second video and an opportunity for someone to sign up for our email database, take a photo and then share it with friends. Um, outdoor, this is something that we had been working on for about a year now, trying to find a great local board that we could really own. Um, this is on Highway 98 heading west into Santa Rosa. It's the old Seaguard Sport. Um, we love this. It's a recently went up. Great opportunity to remind visitors where they are and to reinforce the parent brand. Signature events, we always promote these via banner ads. Our latest one is for wine, women, and shoes in February. Social media and content. So we'd like to just give you guys an, um, a snapshot of the content that we focused on for the last few months. Um, our December content was definitely focused on looking back, favorites of 2015, um, top post. And then as we broke into the new year, it was about South Walton top 10 resolutions, new chefs, and the events that are coming up in the new year. Our social channel performance, we continue to see Instagram. Everybody loves photos, so that's no surprise there. And then our YouTube channel has really done well, and I attribute that to the um, additional reserve spending that we're doing. This is just year-over-year -year performance of our social growth. Our page performance index, that's how engaged are people with our page. We did see a little bit of a dip there for December. Um, not surprising, there was a lot of oversaturation of competitors, everybody putting their stuff out there and putting some dollars behind it. So we expect that to catch up in the new year. And then lastly, a new initiative that we're also working with Pamela's team on is a meetings e-newsletter that goes out to meeting planners. And we just launched this um, in December and already seeing great performance on that. She's going to talk a little bit more about how we are reaching out to partners for this initiative. And that's all I have. I'm happy to answer any questions. Any questions? Yes. Jennifer, would you or perhaps John Irwin uh, say a few words about the uh, Southern Living? Uh, I know you touched on it before from the numbers point of view, but just tell everybody what that Southern Living um, program is all about, which launches this month. All right. Great. Thank you, John. Okay. Great. Thank, you. Thank you, Jennifer. Thanks. Okay. Uh, update from Downs in St. Germain. Good morning, everyone. I'm Philip Downs, and this is Dr. Joseph St. Germain. And we have completed two studies since we last chatted with you folks. One of them deals with trying to figure out how to get the right people here, and the other deals with documenting who has come here. So we'll look at the study that was directed at finding the right people to come here. It's a lifestyle segmentation study. It basically looks at the types of people who come here and we try to find people throughout the United States who share their opinions, attitudes, media behavior, demographics, so that marketing can be targeted to these individuals. And through this analysis, we found three clusters uh, named Gulf States Family, Beachbound Couples, and Sunset Seniors, who make up three out of four of the visitors who come here. Now, they represent nationwide only about 25% of the households. So these are the individuals who are three times more likely to come here. And each one of these clusters, this was the Gulf State families, has segments beneath it. And what we found, and this was no surprise, all of these clusters are highly educated. They're upscale in wealth. Some of them have children, as these do. Some of them don't, as this cluster, the beach-bound couples, do not. But with each of these clusters, we have demographic profiles. And as you will see in future slides, some media and attitudes and opinions and behavioral data on these individuals that can inform marketing. So if we look, for example, at cluster one, here's a demographic profile of it. And each cluster has a demographic profile like this. And we also have detailed information about ethnicity, uh, incomes, home ownership, and so on. And then we have information about 
their media habits. For example, Gulf State families are first cluster. These folks are the ones who watch PBS. They're the ones who read financial websites. And so this information can inform the marketing activity. And then we get into their lifestyles. Uh, these folks, uh, the folks in Gulf State families, are more likely to eat at family restaurants where the children have the say. Uh, you've probably noticed these folks in, in your restaurants, or they're the ones who buy more sporting equipment or take more ski trips. And so for each cluster, we have the same information. So we're just giving an overview. There are 160 slides uh, that are going to be posted, and I know Art will dig through those, but uh, they're there for you to look, look through if you wish. So I won't spend much time on that, but you see the same kind of information for each cluster. Lifestyles, media habits, demographic breakdowns. The Sunset Seniors, for example, are more likely to watch Bloomberg TV or more likely to subscribe to Sirius uh, XM. So we have very detailed information, media, uh, buying behavior, lifestyles for each of these clusters. And this analysis goes on to develop a narrative profile, as you can see here, it gives a narrative of one of the segments, winner circle, and it gives detailed breakdown information for each one of these segments. And it does so for uh, their media habits as well. The index on the right, uh, 277, means that Gulf State families are 2.77 times more likely to watch PBS Kids. So you have very detailed information about their media habits, so you can use this information when you're putting marketing strategies together. Same is true for lifestyle. Gulf State families, 2.8 times more likely to buy tennis equipment. So this report is chock full of all kinds of information to help develop the marketing strategy that will have the best ROI. We were also able to look at uh, visitors by geography. So we broke down the visitors during your peak season. And we, we, you know, this is a, I can go through the whole thing, but you know, your markets that tend to fly a little bit more like Dallas are more represented than your peak season than they are during your not off-peak seasons. In your off-peak, your markets such as Tallahassee, Pensacola, the close drive markets, they are more represented in your off-peak season. And with, with this data, we're also not only able to drill down into markets, we're able to drill down to zip codes within markets. So this is one example of Atlanta. So not only do we have, we know Atlanta's a top feeder <coughs> market, we can look at particular zip codes which are high performing. And so we don't only have in the full report Atlanta, we have other key markets as well. We use exam, Atlanta as an example because it has more high zip codes um, with your visitors. Um, and then uh, just a quick encapsulation of the fall uh, visitor tracking study. Um, again, there's countless slides for that as well, but I'll just give a brief overview. The good news is all the numbers are trending upward. Um, the even better news is while the, there's some increase in the number of visitors, those increases are modest. The large increases are in how much visitors are spending. Uh, your TDT collections, your rev par, and also the income of your average visitor. Your average visitor last year for fall average, average income was 118,000 versus this year at 132,000. So um, as I said, the, the increases are modest for visitors, but the spending and that kind of thing is, the increases are much larger. Any questions? Yes, Dr. Downs, on that Atlanta information, for example, that you just gave us, uh, how would you use that information? You find out there's 25 zip codes in Atlanta, so what do you do with that? If there's any type of direct marketing campaign, Art, they can inform that. Okay. We have so the you, same information for all the feeder markets. Yeah, yeah, I was just wondering, uh, how, well, it's not your responsibility, but John's responsibility would be to, to target in on those, let's say, the top 10 of the 25 zip codes in that area. Okay. Any other comments? Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Welcome. Okay, director's updates, Pamela. Good morning to you all and welcome, Madam Chairman. Thank you. For the record, Pamela Watkins, Director of Sales and Special Events. Back in December, the sales team attended Florida Encounter. This is the 35th year that Florida Encounter has had this <coughs> supplier and meeting planner show. And I think I've, I've explained that before that no other state does this. <coughs> Visit Florida is the only state that brings all of its hoteliers, all of its CVBs together to meet with meeting planners across the U.S. So that is a great benefit to the, to the uh, hoteliers and CVBs of Florida. 
In January, we attended the AAA Ohio Vacation Expo along with other Florida destinations. We had a defined uh, area at the expo. There was about 14,000 attendees in that, so we talked to hundreds and hundreds of people uh, about our destination and answered all their questions. <clears throat> Nearly uh, 3,500 pieces of collateral was given out to, to these folks. Next is the meeting planner e-newsletter that Jennifer talked about. That, went, that was launched in December. That went out to about 5,000 meeting planners in our database. We will launch that every other month. So next week, we'll do the February issue. And every uh, issue, we highlight one of our meeting properties in South Walton. We've got a very positive response from all of our meeting facilities in South Walton on this project. Next is the visitor center stats. We, in December, we were up 2% from 2014. And in January, down 8%. But overall, compared 14 to 15, we were up 7%. As far as branded merchandise that we sell in the center, December, we were down 27% from 2014. January, down 14%. We do have a lot of items in the visitor center for sale. We have sweatshirts, t-shirts, service tumblers, coffee mugs, um, a variety of things. So there's really no rhyme or reason when people come in if they're going to purchase something but we do have a variety for them. Next is the TripAdvisor. We keep track of TripAdvisor and, and uh, read those comments that people make about us. And so far, they have all been positive and they see value in stopping by the visitor center. And just to give you a, a perspective on Visit Florida's welcome centers, they have five in the state, one at I-10 Pensacola, one at Campbellton, one at I-95, and then two down south. For 2015, they had approximately 2,700,000 visitors. So that's just stopping at the five Visit Florida Welcome Centers. And then you have all the other welcome centers in each of the counties. Pam, do you, do you guys reply to, to the TripAdvisor blogs? We, we thank them. Okay. We, we thank them for that. Consistently? Yes. That's proven to be very... Yes, we do. We go in there and do that. Next on the list uh, uh, is the South Walton Snowbird. They have had uh, three meetings to date, December and January. We've attended all three of those meetings. We interact between 400 and 600 people at these meetings. So it's very you know, good for us to be there um, and trying to capture maybe some folks from our, our surrounding areas that come to these meetings and maybe they will come to South Walton next year. Pam, how, much, how has the uh, fall of the Canadian dollar affected us? Well, I can't really t tell you that for sure, but um, we do have less people coming into the center that are from Canada. The girls have noticed that. Any idea how much less? Not really, it, because you don't know everybody that comes in where they're from. You try to engage them in conversation, but you don't always get that information. Next on the list is the uh, collateral, and as you see up there, all that collateral is produced by the TDC. It's all very important, but I think the most important thing, and this is in front of you, is our beachgoer guides. Last year, we hand-delivered 56,000 of these to our bed tax collectors. We will start later this week uh, delivering these. One of our representatives from the visitor center along with one of our code enforcement officers, will actually go door to door. If you have a storefront, they will be at your property delivering these and stressing how important it is to get these in the hands of your visitors so they don't get any fines. And I did want to uh, just give you an update on the North and South Walton Events Committee. The 2017 sponsorship application is out on the street. Uh, it will end April 7th, and then both committees will look at those applications and rank those projects. One other thing, the last thing actually is Convention South Magazine. Uh, South Walton was selected by the Critics' Choice as one of the top meeting destinations in Florida, and we are in good company with Tampa. 
Tampa, Miami, <coughs> Orlando, and Kissimmee. And this is a meeting publication. And the people who select this award are meeting planners. So for meeting planners to select, select South Walton with all those other big de uh, destinations is, is a real honor. <coughs> other properties that were <coughs> mentioned and received an award in South Walton was Sandestin Golf and Beach Resort, the Pearl, Watercolor Inn, and for the uh, best renovated category was Hilton Sandestin. So we are very, very pleased and honored to be in that, in that group of, of destinations. So unless you have anything, that is it. Any other comments from the board? Good job. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for your hard work. <clears throat> John? Yes, thanks for having me back. Uh, update on a few things. Uh, nearby, you actually have, uh, I'll hand that to you, Jim. A couple of pieces from Southern Living coming from both directions, actually. Uh, and um, a new visitor guide, which is hot off the presses. So we have a bunch of materials for you today. But as uh, Mr. Miller mentioned, Southern Living Partnership is a pretty enormous deal. You have a little um, pullout uh, that was 50 favorite things, essentially endorsed by Southern Living, which is quite wonderful that they would pay us uh, the, the respect of uh, adopting us as a partner. The value of all that effort was uh, estimated to be nearly $2 million. Uh, we had some spend in there uh, that was substantial, but uh, about 13%. And it literally was paper costs and the, and the ability to have that carried in their magazine. The magazine is coming around, and you'll see how that was presented uh, to what is arguably our biggest fans, the Southern Living Reader to date still is the number one publication amongst visitors here. So we were uh, very busy the last couple of weeks with the Songwriters Festival, but uh, more so because they were in town with their video crews and shot at a number of locations. There is a chef, some chef, I don't know who he is, but um, uh, numerous artists, lots of venues, uh, lots of musicians were willing to work with us, and Southern Living is currently working on editing five featurette videos, which is a big part of that added value. But this beach bucket list, uh, again, is something that will live on coffee tables for a long time with that commemorative 50th anniversary issue, um, and again, couldn't be more flattering. So we're very, very proud to have been asked to do that. There was um, essentially... Uh, extraordinarily short list in the United States that was even considered. So uh, we have some uh, overruns of that that will be able to be used in brand activations and other places. We found that sometimes the smallest piece is the one that's taken the most because it's easy to carry. Um, we are uh, have one week left, less than one week left, making final preparations to be in New York City to visit Florida has a large mission, their annual mission there. Only 15 brands are accompanying them. SeaWorld, Orlando, The Keys, some really uh, you know, high profile places. And we would be fortunate to be one of those. So uh, we'll be doing some social blitz. We'll actually be contacting many of you uh, that, that regularly push social out and making an announcement uh, in our connections in that they will be feeding uh, social native social into that uh, VIP function as part of the big presentation for three hours. And so that's something that we'll be collaborating with the community. And while we're there, we'll be knocking out a bunch of desk sides. We're um, continually, Sorry. continually um, seem to be climbing the uh, acceptance list in the United States, uh, being able to go and have one-on-ones with publications like New York Post and Bridal Guide and Condé Nast Traveler um, and a whole list uh, of one-on-one. So the team will be canvassing New York, if you will. And, you know, back to the demographics that you've seen, it's not an accident of who we're talking to. It's uh, publications that are reaching consumers that can afford and embrace this product. And really, it's not about beach. You haven't heard us talk very much about beach today. It's about all the other things that you can do in this county which support the working families of the county in shoulder and uh, non-peak seasons. 
To that end, uh, extremely flattering that CBS News Sunday morning, which is a tradition in many households in this country, uh, that a little attention was paid to the Dune Lakes and Topsail. There was a lovely almost four minutes of serenity. They end their show each week with uh, a little bit of Mother Nature, and so that was just recently uh, on us. And again, to be considered one of the nation's most preserved and pristine places is pretty wonderful. Um, that all adds up to the values that you're hearing. Uh, editorial values uh, will be close to exceeding 50 million in the last two years in uh, attention that we didn't pay for, but by outlets and channels that um, help the brand value and the brand awareness, in addition to the millions that we're getting for paid. So the combination of those two are extremely strong. Uh, we've had a few changes on our team today. Gayla Schaefer's in the room. Stand up and say hello. She's just joined our team as uh, community relations coordinator. And uh, we unfortunately have uh, lost John Cross, who did a lot of the award-winning work uh, for publications that you're seeing in tandem with the agency. We did interviews yesterday, and so we're hopeful to find a replacement for him. But um, it's good news, bad news. With some of the award-winning work and the attention that we get, it also means that people are poaching and um, that our people have even greater opportunity. And so we're kind of into a new era with that, and it's something that we're still trying to adjust to. But uh, we're glad to have Gayla, and we we'll look forward to adding another person in the near future. That is my update. If there's anything else that I can address, I'd be happy to. That's great. Yeah. We, we actually put the coastal dune lakes on a continuous loop in our, in our hotel room. So I'm glad you said that. I apologize. And it's awesome. People are already making comments yep. that they did not know. I think we addressed it last time, but again, every opportunity, we um, have a supply of those coastal dune lake DVDs that is free to any uh, person that has the ability to put that in an accommodation or put that in a public place that again reinforces what we value here, which is uh, a little more sunset than jet sets and a little more state parks than amusement parks. And so that's a, a really important. And Gary uh, was the out of the box thinker that said we, didn't, we weren't gonna run DVDs, but they were gonna feed that in every room of their 600 plus facility. So extremely flattering. And then to Pam's point, we're working on those leave no trace and beach safety, rip current information so that we're able to give those resources to folks because all this success is great, but safety's uh, never, never forgotten, so. Good? I just want to add yes, sir. that, uh, and I'll mention this when Stan gets up, but when you look at the numbers here, I think it's truly extraordinary what you, you folks have done as a team. Last year we had, with 4.5% TDT, we had almost $12,000 short of $20 million. This year with 4%, so that's a significant difference between the two, it amounts to about $2 million a year. You, you, uh, the TDT was, was $20,146,000. So you actually exceeded the number and had the 4.5% the uh, stayed the same, yeah. we would have been somewhere around $2.4 million. Uh, I'm not sure there's a model in the United States that you could be more pleased with than what everybody has achieved here. Right. We give you a 1% tease of what the work is, and right. I think today has been a, a great 1%, um, but it's still a disconnect for some. They think we're trying to find one more person to come you know, here in June, and that's all that we do. I, th I think today we made a really good point that what we're trying to do is more surgical and fill places where there's opportunity where businesses aren't actually making a profit this month. There's businesses losing money. And so that really is our focus, trying to be as smart as we can. Well, and I think Dr. Downs can back me up on this, or I'm using his number if I remember correctly. But we had a 1.9% increase in visitors, and yet we had, what, a 24% increase in revenue? It's been that way, uh, I mean, extreme numbers for four or five uh, quarters now, and that's the magic. It's not. 10% more people, it's willing to spend 10% when they're here. And, and I, I've never seen anything like it in my uh, professional life, and I couldn't be more proud of you know, the facilities that I get to work with and this team and, and you guys caring about such things. Great job. Also, on the, uh, as Dr. Downs mentioned, the uh, shoulder seasons, we're starting to fill those in like we are talking about. Yeah, I mean, some of the numbers that you look at, uh, September, for example, over the last 10 years has almost tripled the economy in September. Uh, that just that's not normal and it's a it's a burden yeah. 
um, but it's the type of burden that we need to adjust to because it carries people to have jobs and feed their kids. I don't know whether this. Track, I just want to let you know that that's that's great. You yep. guys did Thank you. Job. I don't know whether this is measurable or not, but I drove in from Orlando yesterday, having been at Disney World with millions of people. I drove into. Sorry. Our, that's all right. Uh, grandkids are great. No? <laughs> drove into the public's parking lot and I couldn't find a parking space. And and I'm saying to myself, the last week in January, how come the public's parking space is filled at seven o'clock at night? Well, so certainly some of it's should. us. There, there's more of us residents. We all yeah. know that's a, the other dynamic. And, and but that's because there's jobs and there's opportunity. Sure. So. Great, great job. Yeah. Thank Thanks. You. I, I, I can't. Well, I'm sorry. You're all right. I cannot stress enough, though. Uh, we've talked about this uh, a bit last year. If we all keep our ADRs up, we are going to continue to get type of clientele we want and to stay away from the clientele that is towards the east and that also means maintaining the facilities keeping them updated yeah. that, that's so key and, and that's what brings the good people that we have and yeah. eventually they become residents and good residents of that so and I think maybe we can do a better job to talk about how much of a struggle, frankly, it is to look at the competitors that would love to have the $400 a night consumer come to their destination instead of our destination. So there's still a lot of stewardship and care that needs to happen, even though the success has been there. It's probably harder to maintain that and not be poached and not make a mistake of taking your eye off of the goals. So thank you for saying so. Ms. Harris. Gary, thank you. Thank you for speaking about the ADR. I'm going to pass these out to y'all because I was in Tallahassee speaking in front of Matt Gates' committee last week. And I happened to pick up a magazine. And knowing that we're all trying to get our ADRs up, in the Tallahassee magazine, which is, um, as far as Edgewater, we book a lot of people from Tallahassee. And when I opened it up and found the full page cover, from Sandestin, now not Gary, but Sandestin as a whole. Thank you. Because the Hilton is, is like me, Gary, and I want to keep our rates up. But to think at spring break when, when we really, Edgewater is full on Easter week already. So here we have a color ad saying spring break savings. Up to 25% on seven nights, 20% off five nights, and 15% off three nights. I mean, if we have big competitors all cutting their rates already, when people are fed up with children in Panama City and they want to come here, if we're going to keep up our daily rates, we need that large bed <laughs> tax collectors group, Gary, that, uh, that Jim started that I was a part of and didn't make many meetings. But We've got to get all the bed tax collectors. I'm, I'm really glad to see some here today that haven't been here in a long time. We've got to get all the bed taxers, tax collectors organized because when Sandestin has an ad, and this isn't the one, but they do have one, for $79 a night. Now, for a condo, I'm sorry, but that's, that's awful low. I mean, we're at $240 a night. So if we, the only way to get better clientele is to um, you know to keep our rates up and I know sometimes you might go through a spell where you're not having as many but I know Jim would rather people come and not get two meals and one meal and share it or let two kids share a meal they'd like to the restaurants make more when everybody can spend money the other thing that's in this book Walton County Commissioners reckless disregard for our reason our region's reputation now we're advertising in it, and then we're getting bad articles. So we need to, we need to, everybody needs to try to watch that too. But for the daily room rates, that's really we've got to get all the bed tax collectors together, and we need to meet more just bed tax collectors among ourselves and decide what we're going to do to keep the rates up too. Thank, thank you for your comments, Brian. <coughs> Good morning, Madam Chairman, Council Members. Appreciate your time. I'm Brian Kellenberger, Director of Beach Operations, with your Beach Operations updates. First off, destination improvement projects. Uh, Coastal Dune Lake Signs, uh, we've completed our uh, uh, last six. We're now on to the final eight. 
uh, environmental department with Walton County is spearheading the uh, composition and uh, theme of each one of the remainder signs. And those will be presented at our destination improvement committee meeting next month. I highly encourage y'all to attend, take a look at them. Uh, and then we'll get those uh, implemented and in place, uh, hopefully before the uh, summer season. Multi-use path projects, uh, our Great and Beach Western Lake project, uh, two phases. First phase is out for bid. Expect to start construction pretty soon. The second phase, which is actually from the west side of Western Lake to Highway 283, uh, had some uh, value engineering uh, that we undertook. And uh, Cliff and company with Preble Rich is still under design and permit with that. Expect for it to go out sometime in the summer and construction uh, in the fall. Highway 98 to 30A uh, West connector, that's our area from Mac Bayou down to 30A West. Uh, that, that was on hold pending a reclassification of that section of highway. Right now it's considered uh, <coughs> a, a rural highway. They're going to reclassify it to urban, which makes it easier to put bike paths uh, closer to the roadway, less expensive. If you're familiar, we have a double swell on each side of that road, and it makes it problematic to uh, put the bike path where it needs to be off the side of the road like it is classified now. Uh, we expect to get that. Uh, as soon as they reclassify, we'll get back in the mix and hopefully get that section completed. Um, Seagrove Beach, Highway 395 uh, to Eastern Lake. Uh, on each side of 395, we identified some problematic areas. Walton County uh, Public Works Engineering is working on design and permitting. Recently, the BCC decided to uh, go ahead and do design on the intersection of 395 and 38. So sort of put these projects on hold slightly. Uh, as soon as they make final decisions on that, we'll uh, morph them together and do them all at the same time. Uh, 38 parking project, moving right along. There's six locations uh, being designed and permitted by two different engineering firms. Uh, the locations are Fort Panic, um, Ed Wileen, uh, uh, Blue Mountain Beach, and Eastern Lake, and then the uh, roadway along uh, Highway 30A just to the east of Highway 283. Um, the uh, conceptual design has been approved. They're now working on final design. Expect to have that back before the BCC here pretty soon, and we'll put it out for RFP for construction. And the plan is to construct them in between spring break and summer season. Total project, we had approximately 260 spaces uh, along Highway 30A, uh, all parallel parking. Uh, some of it on the uh, uh, north-south roads, uh, mainly at 393 and on Highway 283. Uh, but anyway, it will add some much-needed parking at our regional beach accesses. Uh, here's a few of the uh, conceptual designs. Uh, won't bore you with the details. You can look through if you've got any questions. Please contact me personally, and we can uh, discuss it. Uh, Great Beach Restroom Beach Access, working with the Environmental Department and FDEP on amending our uh, land use plan and then, of course, a conceptual plan for the restroom. This was a project that was brought to us by some residents of Grayton Beach and visitors to Grayton Beach that uh, recognize that's a highly used beach and we don't have any restroom facilities there. So it's asked that we explore the possibility of doing that. As you all know, it's a unique piece of land. It's a lease from the state. It's got some particular uh, uses that, that go with it. So it's uh, not an easy process, but we're working through it. Uh, beach cleaning. Um, once again, our December and January numbers, uh, fa fairly low. Uh, beach code enforcement. Uh, once again, you know, we uh, submit to you the uh, written citations and warnings, just one of the uh, indicators that we go by. Uh, December and January, very low months. Uh, we actually had a slight decrease in uh, December. Slight increase in January. You notice those numbers are both low, eight and ten. Uh, code enforcement, uh, like I said, we, we have a presence on the beach during this slow season. Um, we use it for getting geared up for our new uh, spring break and summer season. We've held our two meetings, or one meeting for uh, the beach fenders. Our next one is tomorrow, mandatory meeting where we go over the rules and regulations. We bring in other agencies that we work with on the beach, and uh, we lay out how we all want to play on the beach, and it's a good effort. Uh, some other updates for code enforcement. Uh, we've implemented our automation process. As you know, uh, this was uh, something we started back in really 2014. I was tasked by the previous director. It took a while to get in place. We now uh, have a, a customized access database that we input information real time on the beach. Our previous way was a um, 
daily sheet, uh, tracking sheet that then would be submitted to a administrative clerk who would enter into our spreadsheets. This way we can now produce reports and they can be exported directly into the spreadsheets to produce the pretty graphs that I uh, produce quarterly at the end of the year. Um, the other part of it is a uh, customized ARC GIS based system. That's what we use for our wildlife lighting ordinance uh, uh, violations. It is a uh, interactive program that shows us our location on the beach. It's paired with Walton County Proper Appraisers uh, database so we can gather in the property information and it also uh, spits out or produces our uh, uh, letters of notification and catalogs them so we can follow up on them. Uh, that one is still in the implementation process. We hope to have it up completely running uh, before spring break, definitely for the uh, summer season. A uh, few other updates. Personnel, uh, looking at a new code enforcement officer for this year. Beach Ambassador Administrative Replacement to take Haley's position. Uh, as you know, Haley uh, uh, had a child uh, last year, and uh, she also changed positions within our organization. So we're now refilling that position. Some training certifications. Uh, all of our officers are at least level one uh, FACE certified. That's the uh, state accredited agency for code enforcement. Uh, Jeff actually has uh, level three. We would take in level four this year, and we'll progress each level each year until we go through the four levels. We also have taken some uh, US FWS sea turtle identification certification. We do this annually uh, as part of our effort uh, in uh, uh, working with South Walton Turtle Watch, turtle Watch on our turtle monitoring program, and also a wildlife lighting certification that was put on by US FWS, the Turtle Conservancy uh, Association. That was a seminar to uh, identify what is uh, turtle compliant lighting and how to achieve it. Uh, equipment, uh, I've got two new code enforcement vehicles coming in. One is a new truck for a new code enforcement officer and the other one is a replacement uh, for a truck that we've had for three years. Our typical rotation is three years on the beach. After that we get a, uh, we start noticing an inordinate uh, increase in repair bills on these trucks. So code enforcement and beach maintenance trucks get rotated out every three years. And that's all I have on beach operations. Is there any questions? I noticed spring break starts the end of this month. Didn't yes, ma'am. 27th really, will be really uh, the early. Saturday it, they start to come. I didn't realize until today that it started so soon. Yes, ma'am. So, thank you. Appreciate all you do. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Ron. Mr. Stan. Good morning. Um, I'd like to echo some of your comments about the staff and the job that they're doing. They do an excellent job from my perspective. Uh, John, his team, uh, Pam and her team, and, and um, Brian and his team, Christina and uh, Lisa as well. So we're getting ready for the uh, the season coming up, as you noticed, it starts, spring break starts the 27th of this month. Um, we've done several things in preparation for that, including uh, having a safety meeting with uh, South Walton Fire, the lifeguard program, make sure we're all on the same page. And uh, also, as Brian mentioned, the uh, vendors meetings have taken place as well. <clears throat> First under my update is the uh, letters to the Auditor General and the Department of Revenue and the BCC. Uh, as Mr. Norris indicated, those have been signed and mailed. Uh, just a point of clarification, the reason that those that item is under my update is because uh, it required no further action by this board. Strategic planning agreement. Um, if you recall some time back, <clears throat> we uh, brought it to you and we took it to the BCC um, in hopes of expanding the uh, strategic planning services um, and uh, we have an agreement now with strategic advisory group that has been approved by the board and executed. The um, public space design process that's moving forward. We have two workshops scheduled for the 16th and 17th of this month. It'll be in this room from 4 p.m. to 7 or 8 seven or eight so uh, and, and I believe we've got some flyers in the in the foyer if you want to pick up one of those so come be a part of that the executive director selection process um, we will be meeting tomorrow 
as a committee and interviewing four candidates for that position. Um, that takes place uh, all day tomorrow at the TDC conference room, and that is a public meeting. Does that start at 8 o'clock? starts at 8 o'clock, yes, ma'am. And uh, as Mr. Miller mentioned, the sun, sunshine, sunshine shuttle update, um, that went before the BCC on um, the 12th of January and uh, was essentially a denial of that request based on a no vote. So um, that's where that's at. So subject to your questions, I believe that's, uh, that's all we have. Yes, uh, Stan, on, on the uh, South Walton Fire District, you mentioned the lifeguard program, which we've, which we've previously discussed. But about a year ago, we also talked about the possibility of working with them in terms of, uh, of uh, repairing vehicles and so forth. Has any progress been made on that front? Working with them as far as a, a fleet <clears throat> that, management program? Right, they would, that they would assist us in maintaining our fleet. Uh, I've personally not had any conversation with them on that, on that matter. Okay. And uh, maybe this is a question for more for John than for you, but uh, Allegiant Airlines is now flying into VPS. Have, have we had any contact with them, or is, is it? Not safe. Okay. Uh, they're only flying in, what, twice a week or something like that? From St. Louis and Cincinnati? It's pretty slow. Yeah, pretty slow. Okay. And uh, one last question. on You mentioned the letter has gone to the Auditor General. Is it, is it exactly the letter that... Uh, that that uh, Mr. Atkinson drafted on December 1st? Yes, sir. It is the letters that you approved at your last meeting. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, one more question. Uh, I know we're required to do uh, sunshine training. Uh, do we need a date for that to schedule that? We, Christina and Lisa, have been working with Clay on some potential dates. We, we had initially thought of incorporating it into this meeting, but mm -hmm. uh, we were afraid that it would make it quite lengthy. So we had mercy on me. <laughs> we um, we decided to make it a separate meeting and could uh, utilize that period as a time for the other committee members that have had conflicts to come in and, and receive it as well. So I believe we have some potential dates that have been discussed, and uh, so we'll be getting that out to you guys shortly to hopefully uh, get get it on everybody's calendar. Thank you. Any council comments? Uh, I see Captain Rowell is here. If, uh, if you would like to make some comments about what you guys are doing in preparation for the upcoming season, I'd appreciate that. Sure, thank you. Captain Rowell, Walton County Sheriff's Office. Uh, a couple of things. First and foremost, uh, we would like to thank the board and former director Jim Bagby. As you know, we came to you a couple months ago asking for some safety equipment, about $13,000 worth. Uh, we got some... Um, rescue boards, uh, some life vests, and some trailers for our jet skis. We have since acquired that equipment, and with the help of South Walton Fire, they're not here either, but thank you, uh, we were able to um, get some training on that and deploy that. So uh, I think it's a, a, a great piece of equipment that y'all have helped us get, uh, and it will certainly help save lives. Uh, to talk a little bit about spring break, <clears throat> excuse me, and I'm sorry I don't have a uh, PowerPoint, but we are running two operations this year. Uh, we call the first one our college spring break, which is the scenic golf, excuse me, I got a, something in my throat there. <clears throat> our college spring break, and uh, that's happening starting February 27th, running through the end of March. Uh, that will happen mostly on the scenic golf side, as you know. Uh, we will be having our second spring break, which is our, what we call our high school spring break. And as I think some of the uh, prior presenters said um, uh, Atlanta is a big draw during that particular time. So uh, those two operations will be going on. The college spring break will run about March 30th through uh, April 16th. So uh, we'll be in full force just like we did last year. <coughs> Shouldn't uh, see anything much different than what we had. So that's what we'll be doing. Okay. Any questions? Uh, Audie, are you going to be setting up on 30A for that uh, high school spring break or like Yes, sir. Know. Both uh, both the um, college spring break will have our command post down there at Majestic Suns. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll be running that operation down there. Then we'll move our command bus over to the seaside area and run that as well. So uh, we are partnering both with uh, Majestic Suns and with um, uh, Seaside to help us put that out there. 
Uh, one thing that I do, I'm, I'm sorry, were you going to say something, Art? No. Okay. One thing that I do get a lot of questions about is the Bay County, uh, no alcohol on the beach. And uh, I, I would never sit here and predict uh, what's fixing to happen during spring break because I don't know what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. But what I will say is this, our, our housing <clears throat> demographic is so much different than Bay County, so much different than Destin. Uh, I think Destin's going to pump about $75,000 into uh, law enforcement for security. Uh, so they're going to squeeze pretty hard this year. And I think that's a big response into what we did last year. Uh, we did, I think, about 700 arrests last year. Uh, the year before that, like 900. And even the year before that, about 1,100. Uh, but uh, we, we, we certainly have a, a much different uh, housing demographic than Panama City. Um, and, and even so, I was even bringing up that if somebody's not really familiar with the area and they're looking for a house to, to rent and they find a house and they say, well, you know, it's down there uh, uh, off of 30A near Rosemary, well, that's actually a Panama City Beach address. And it, may, uh, it could actually discourage people, uh, people who want to drink on the beach and carry on. It may discourage them because it is actually a Panama City Beach address. Uh, but I, I still don't think that we're going to have quite the influx uh, like Panama City Beach did. Um, uh, again, we're not taking this for granted. We're going to be in full force. We're going to have uh, uh, plenty of overtime officers to uh, help us. So uh, we will be out there. Uh, we're not going to be complacent about this. Uh, again, we are doing our same drill. Uh, everybody goes to Defuniac. Uh, so that's always quite interesting. That does. It is a big deterrent. Uh, when we do that, word does get out quickly. Uh, we call it the rule of four. You arrest one and it takes uh, three of their friends to get them out because it takes about a half a day to a full day <laughs> to get them out of jail after they have to drive about 50 miles. So, um, so nothing, not, not much has changed for us. We are going to uh, be out there in full force and all that. So um, any questions around spring break? I, I've got a question actually. I, I know in the past to supplement our security, uh, we, we or whatever uh, off-duty officers mm -hmm. uh, is that going to, we had a little bit of a difficult time doing that last year because of availability that is a staffing issue for us that's a big staffing issue for us. we don't have enough deputies to go around unfortunately uh, there's a there's huge requests for off-duty but we have to look at our operation plan first and we have to staff our operational plan first because we are specific about where we need to be yeah. but uh, you're not the first person I've actually met with other uh, businesses and resorts in the area uh, they're concerned as well about off-duty but it, it really is is we just don't have enough we're we're in a hiring uh, trying to hire as many as we can right now to staff more folks down here in, in the south end and, and real quick there have been some changes um, uh, at the sheriff's office as, as they always say the only thing constant is the sheriff's office has changed uh, we did uh, mix up a lot of lieutenants we got two uh, new district lieutenants down here um, the sheriff and the BCC has been committed to providing more staffing down here we are working to add more personnel specifically down here we've added more investigators specifically to the south end so we're growing down here we know that we see the numbers um, and and we are watching that so we are we are very cognizant about what's happening in the south end no. Captain Raul, uh, excuse me, okay. no, you go ahead. I was going to, to follow up on Gary's point, uh, it's my understanding, I could be wrong, that last year some deputies were lent out or whatever the term is to, to Bay County. Uh, That's where I was going. And so uh, I read your mind. Yeah. And so yes. um, is that what happened? Why, is, why are we short of personnel and yet we're sending people over to Bay County? I don't no, understand. No, very good question. And obviously we... Uh, some of that was uh, forced overtime, uh, and when you're talking about uh, bringing somebody in, forcing somebody to come in, uh, as opposed to an off-duty detail, we can't force somebody to go to uh, Sandestin Hilton and say, you're going to work for Sandestin Hilton today. We can't do that. So a lot of times we, we maximize our resources, pull people in, uh, and send them over there. Um, and in that particular case, we did have to, we did have to voluntold, as some refer to it, uh, you're going to Bay County to help. And, and of course that does, uh, you know, you think, well, why are we going to Bay County? It does help us in some respects. That way we don't have an overflow. We can help them control the problem over there and we don't have a spillover. Of course, that was funded by Bay County. Um, uh, we did get reimbursed for that. So there was no cost uh, to Walton County for that. And that's just uh, sheriffs working together and helping one another out. And, and they, had a, they had a big problem over there. They had a huge problem over there. Sure. Huge so when, when a deputy goes over there, is he or she paid by by Bay County? Well, what or, a or, or does the Walton County Sheriff's Office get compensated? No, no, for sir. It? It's a reimbursement. We pay the deputy as we do in any other. They get the salary from us. Bay County reimburses um, uh, my, my, the, the Sheriff's Office or the county. They reimburse us with that. So, 
Yes, but it, it is a staffing issue for us, but we are working diligently to hire more folks and, and put more staffing down here. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you. Captain. Sorry about that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Any other council comments before we move to public comments? Anybody would like to speak in the public? Ms. Ms. Nielsen? Mr. Hudson, you're next. My name is Mary Nielsen and I have three comments. The first one's going back to the water tower branding. Um, instead of spending money on the water tower branding to, the, to you all and to us who live here and um, to let the people know that they're welcome, I believe that since they're, they've already made arrangements to be here, they kind of know where they are and that perhaps that, that money could be better purposed for another cause. And I have been traveling around and looking specifically at street signs. The visibility of street signs, the signs, the colors, and where they're located, both on state highways and feeder roads, arterials, local streets. And I would like you to all look at night, when you're driving around at night, and specifically look at the visibility that our guests have they perhaps may be here for the first time, and although everybody says, oh, we have GPS, well, that's wonderful. Maybe they do, maybe they don't. But I think that we do have a um, deficiency, let's put it like that, in the visibility at night of our signage for our roadways. And I would like you to consider that as a possibility of something to be investigated. And I understand that would be with FDOT, the Walton County BCC, tourism, um, the Public Works Department, whatever. But I think that that is an avenue that could be explored to see if I'm the only one that thinks that or if others think that and it would be conducive to our visitors. The second thing I would like to bring up is what was just mentioned about the Panama City Beach address. I'm 38. Um, for years and years, um, a short <coughs> distance east of, what, of Camp Creek Lake, there has been a dividing line. And all addresses east of that area, with the exception of Rosemary Beach's own zip code, are Panama City Beach, Florida, 32413. And we have never been able to break out of that situation. And I think that's a disservice to our county, and it's a very confusing thing. And I think that this is something that the tourism marketing people should really be looking at, as to how that could be converted to us, a zip code for us that would always show up as Walton County. Um, I recently looked up uh, the Department of Business and Professional Relations um, implemented a couple of years ago a requirement that all HOAs register. And they have a master file of all HOAs that have complied with this new law or not. They're not there. And when I was researching certain HOAs on the east end of 30A that have Panama City Beach addresses, I discovered that they all were listed on Bay County with <coughs> Department of Business and Professional <coughs> Relations because that's their address. So I think that's another marketing um, issue that should be addressed and I think that that's a complicated situation because the mail is delivered out of Panama City Beach. But I think we should maybe look into how that could be um, rearranged uh, for the future. The third topic is many of you may or may not be aware of a code enforcement case that had to do with land use and wedding event homes. And it started back in 2010, and it weaved its way for a couple of years through our code enforcement department. And it was about a wedding house in Seagrove Beach. And that wedding house was in a residential preservation area, brought before code enforcement, ruled that it was in violation of the land use district it sat in. It um, went through code enforcement twice. Each time it was ruled in violation. Went to the local judges. It was supported and upheld. The ruling was upheld by the local judges. The owner of the property appealed it to Tallahassee, to the appellate level, and they lost there. They then, this year, this past year, requested the Florida Supreme Court to intervene. And all this time, this particular property has operated unfettered and unstopped since 2000, the late 2009 in this particular land use district. And the Florida Supreme Court refused it. 
this past summer. This is not resolved at the county level, to my understanding from Mark Davis, but I think that this committee and the TDC should be aware that in certain land use districts, preferably you know, the residential preservation district, it is purely a residential land use. And when you have somebody that has two or three events that may have 100 people on a lawn or in a property in this land use area, they are running a business. It's now been supported. It's been rejected by the Florida Supreme Court to be heard. And this should be upheld. So in keeping with your marketing, which I know that years past they have tried to really limit the advertising of event properties to really be in appropriate places. Um, that is just something I thought you should be aware of and you can discuss it with Mr. Davis if you'd like any clarification of that particular case. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Nelson. Mr. Hudson? For the record, my name is Bob Hudson and I'm the director of the Walton County Taxpayers Association. Um, I want to speak on comments by Mr. Norris and comments by Commissioner Jones that were made this morning. Um, I'm not the author of the email that went out, but I am the person that pushes the button on a computer once the verbiage and everything is verified. Mr. Norris, let me point you to the BCC tape. I went out in the hall and watched it. Uh, it was reported at the BCC meeting that you refused to sign the letter. Now, if you didn't do that, you need to take it up with the county attorney, and you need to take it up with the commissioner who made that statement. And Mr. Sunday did not deny that at that point in time. I did verify with uh, the county attorney before that email went out that that was his understanding of what occurred. So before you sit back and say that somebody uh, did something, our organization tries to verify everything that we do. We try and be fair and honest when we do that. Uh, but if you didn't, when did you sign the letter, Tim? Bob, um, first of all, I didn't name your group. I just said we received an email. I, and I'm so, well aware so of that. beside that. And all I said was, is that I did not refuse. So all I made was some just general statements. I didn't name anybody in particular. So um, okay. that's it. When so it's been sign signed it? and it's been uh, sent. So it's over. Mr. Hudson, will you, you address your questions to me, please? Okay. He addressed me directly. So I, 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 I understand. Uh, could someone report to me when the letter was signed? Um, this, yeah, we could do that later. Why don't you two have a discussion if it's that okay. important? I, I'd like to know when the letter was signed, too. My understanding was the letter was signed and transmitted yesterday. Thank you. That's uh, what I received. The second the thing I'd like to talk about is some comments, Commissioner Jones, that you made, mm -hmm. where you said that this email from whoever that organization was said that you demanded. Yeah, I wish There's I had a copy. Thing. I do at my I do office. with me, and I'm going to read it to you. Read it. And, and then there was a statement about what are they trying to hide. Well, I, I don't know that anything's been well, trying to hide anything. Well, when you go and look at the tape, there was a statement made by Mr. Sunday that the item would be on the agenda, and it was not when the agenda came out on Thursday. It was now, not. I understand. It, excuse me. It was not listed on the agenda, but it was every intention to bring this up under the director's updates were there. We deal, and the only thing we can deal with is what is on the agenda. When the acting chair says it's going to be on the agenda, we get the agenda on Thursday, Friday, and it was not there. Now, whether he wants to list it and everything, that's fine. I have no problem with that. I just want to clarify that what our organization or what the email that went out said um, you said that we that email said that you demanded. I'm read going to read the, you read, the section. Read the statement. Yeah. Now Commissioner Jones asked the BCC to make her the BCC representative. And put my glasses on. Sorry, cell phones are small. 
chair of the TDC board. When I went out in the hall and looked at the tape once again, there was an election that was held. There were some people that said they couldn't do it, and you volunteered to do it, if that was the wish of the county commission. So I don't think that anywhere in there there is anything that says you demanded. I asked. And, and I, I'd appreciate you clarifying that we did not Excuse say Excuse me, ask. I did not ask the BCC to make me chair. I did not ask the BCC to direct me to this position. Well, the way the BCC works is there's a motion and a second, and it's the pleasure of the board. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, we, we can speak in semantics if we want to. I just want to clearly under, make sure that everybody understands that that email did not say that you demanded anything. Okay. Excuse me. Now, asked. if you want to argue whether you ask if you make your name and put it in, that, in my opinion, mm -hmm. is asking and everything. And in terms of the agenda item, I think I explained that very, very well. Um, we try to uh, be fair and we try and be honest in what we do. We, we take what we do as a service to this community and people who are a member of our organization. If I'm wrong, we're gonna say I'm wrong. Uh, I'm going to post Mr. Norris on our website and send to our 3,400 members that section of the tape that says what was said. I'm gonna do the same thing about this meeting what was said because I want our membership a lot of those people watch these telecasts and I'm going to make sure that they understand what we did and what we did not do I have one question for Brian Brian you mentioned citations and warnings can you break that out in terms of warnings versus actual citations that were written for me and send it to me I, I don't need it right, right now I, I would would appreciate that uh, our, our role is to try and help. Our role is to try and look at everything that we can to make this a better place. That's what we try and do. Please don't take it in any way other than that. We try and verify what we say, and we try and mean what we say. Thank you. And very I much. have one question. If, if you saw that you looked at the agenda and you saw that it was not spelled out, would a quick phone call have helped your organization? Well, you have to understand when the agenda came out and trying to contact anybody in Walton County government on a Friday afternoon is not. You, uh, you, you know what? You can contact me anytime and I answer my phone. Well, and, have, yeah. and, you know, I, I guess, and I don't know if this is a place to state this, but the taxpayers group was formed many years ago. I was actually one of the founding members. And member. we, yes, we actually formed it to be a support and help to our community and to the different organizations. And, and I really, I would like to see that, you know, that come back into it. it, it my perception is that, that, you know, you're constantly trying to make it look like we're trying to hide something or we're not, you know, we're not trying, I'm not trying to hide anything. And as far as communication, call me anytime. Anytime, if you have a question about the agenda, I think that would be a better way to handle business as opposed to sending this out and getting all these emails to come in, which I don't mind, we answer all our e emails anyway. But I just think it might be a better way of us serving each other better. Well, we try and have a great relationship with commissioners. We try and have a great relationship with the county uh, administrator. Mm -hmm. He responds to emails a lot of times on Sunday night at 10 o'clock. Uh, we try and work with the county in every way that we can, but we are an organization that stands for certain things and we're going to do what we believe and what the board believes because we're governed by a board. I don't make decisions. I don't have a vote. But there are 18 people who sit down and make decisions about what our organization and what role it's going to take and take place. I, I can tell you that there are some things being done to try and work on, on some very positive things. But uh, the whole issue is, is it revolves around uh, the matrix study, which is the root of what we're, we're sitting here talking about. Uh, I made a call to the state attorney general's office, and Clay, you, you may back me up. Or, I, I don't think the state's uh, auditor general's office is going to, I, I don't think they have authority to do what you've asked. I think the DOR has. And I noticed in Stan's slide that it said it went to uh, Auditor General as well as the DOR, and I'm assuming that meant the Department of Revenue. Correct. Okay. And, and I can clarify that. And just 
for the board's edification, probably more for um, Chairperson Jones, who was not here at the time the board did it. Under the statute, the TDC, when they find an expenditure to possibly be unauthorized or otherwise of questionable nature, has one remedy. That remedy is to provide a written notice to the Board of County Commissioners and the Department of Revenue, the DOR, concurrently. That is what the primary letter did. In one of the prior meetings, the question was raised, I believe, by a citizen as well as one of our council members about assistance from the Auditor General. In fact, I believe it was represented that one of our state senators had offered that assistance. I'm not going to weigh in on whether or not the Auditor General actually has the jurisdiction to do so. The Auditor General finds they basically determine what their jurisdiction is. We can't really do that. So what we did, though, in an abundance of caution, was to send the letter that went to the BCC and to the DOR with a cover letter to the state's Auditor General to ask if their office is able in any way to provide any assistance on that matter that we would welcome it. It's basically an open invitation should they find they have jurisdiction. And secondly, Madam Chairperson, just for the clarification of the agenda, I think I probably need to interject that on staff just because I know this is an issue that this entire committee has been concerned about in terms of when these letters were going to go out. Last week, Mr. Sunday and I spoke on Thursday regarding what we need to do on this issue. By as they had still not been sent at this point in time, he and I discussed. I said, well, have we talked to the chairman at this point, Chairman Norris? As, we, as it turns out, we're in a, a little bit of a unique situation here. We don't truly operate under Robert's Rules of Order in the county, as many of the citizens here and board members know. So it's not necessarily an orderly succession when the BCC appoints a new chairperson. That's why Mr. Norris actually opened the meeting today and passed the gavel. It's not as though we elected him in the course of the meeting. So I said, Look, let's reach out to the chairman at the time and see. Mr. Sunday reached out to Mr. Norris, spoke to him. I spoke to Mr. Norris on Thursday of last week. He indicated to me the issues that had come up and why the letters had not been executed yet and is, that he was prepared to do so. He was going to be out of town. I said, okay. Fair enough. We'll get them signed as soon as you're back in town at the start of the week. Mr. Sunday and I spoke again, and for the TDC's knowledge, he asked, do we need to have it as an agenda item? I said, at this point in time, you can address it under your, under your director's update because there's no additional action required by the TDC. If, however, these letters don't get signed, and I believe Stan can chime in on this, I told him before we'll expect that we were probably going to have the council asking us why they haven't been signed because they told them they would get an update on it. So it was conditioned on that happening. That's why I said it could be addressed under his update because unless a member, it was a unanimous approval, so unless a member who had voted for those letters wished to reconsider it, there was no further action this board could actually take. So that's why it was not a separate listed agenda item for action purposes or otherwise because of those conversations I had in which I was instructed that they would be executed on Monday. and. To, again, to my knowledge and from what staffs advised me, that was the case. So if that created any confusion to the TDC Council, my apologies to you as well. That's why that was. It was a non-action item and something that I believe was going to be addressed as a simple update once they had been sent. And I honestly don't know if they made it in your package or not once they were signed. But yes, and to Mr. Miller's earlier question, they were the exact letters that we reviewed with the one addition that I gave them to the TDC in an editable format so they could drop them on TDC letterhead. That's the only difference. I think you have blank, non-letterheaded <clears throat> copies. Thank you, Councillor, for that. Let me let me just add one thought. That is, uh, w uh, Mr. Atkinson and I have been talking about this since uh, August, I believe. I went back through my files. Uh, so this has been a five or six month process to to get this letter written, and I'm glad it finally is written. And uh, but let me, for those that that are not aware of what this issue is all about, no one no one up here is accusing anybody of doing anything wrong. There's no malfeasance here. There's no criminality here, implied or otherwise. Simply, we're, we're asking for a clarification as to whether or not the county is author, can be authorized by Florida statutes to take an additional $900,000 from the TDC for cost allocation. That's all we're asking for. We're not saying anybody did anything wrong. We just like to know if it's permissible. If it is, so be it. If it's not, well, then we'll take corrective action. So. There's, there's no reason to get defensive about this. There's no reason to accuse anybody to feel accused of doing something wrong. It's simply we as, as a TDC have one responsibility, one only, and that is to watch the money. Everything else is, is beyond our control. We are charged with watching the money, and that's simply what we're doing. We're asking people <coughs> in positions of authority to say, is this a legal use, an authorized use of the money? 
And if it is, it is. We'll move on. If it's not, well, then we'll do something differently. So I, I don't, I don't want to make more out of this than, than we, we, that it seems to be being made out of it. Uh, and the hesitancy, even to the, to the point of not asking the question, not answering the question as to when the letter was sent, seems to be to complicate the matter. I'm glad it was sent. It's over with. Now we'll hear from whoever wants to respond in, in Tallahassee. So, Mr. Sunday, thank you for making this thing happen. Betty. Hi, Betty Letcher. Um, two comments. First of all, I would like to really thank Brian Kellenberger. I had it called on him to clean up the uh, Inlet Beach Park. And whoever he got to do that work did a fantastic job. Brian does a wonderful job. Call on him, he does whatever. So I wanted to give him a compliment. The other thing that Mary Nielsen spoke about was the um, zip code. I live at Inlet Beach. I know how difficult because I live at West Park Place, 32413. In Panama City, there is a park place. They have kept three of our things from UPS. If you don't have to sign for them, they keep them. Uh, I get their mail, they get mine. If there is any way that we could get, since we live in Walton County, to be living in Walton County, it really would help. Huh? Oh, ever since I've been here. Oh. Several years back. Oh, I thought you said how we long had, had I had the same issue. I'm holding I'm sorry. Several years back, we had the same issue at the Hilton where we had an actual destined zip code. And um, that has since changed, and they gave us a timeline of when that was going to change. But I really don't know what the process is or if anybody else does. I don't um, know either. Even so. the, and what's so strange, it's long distance. If you call somebody in Bay County, it's long distance. I mean, it's, but so I don't know. If I could help with it and y'all have any ideas, I'll do it because it would really help me. Yeah. And I'm not sure how we could proceed, but my assistant can sure research and find out for us. Thank you, Abby. Okay, thank you all. Y'all are doing a great job. You thank come you. Back. I'll speak on that real quick, but really from a public safety standpoint, obviously if you dial 911, it's based on your address. So you'll get the proper law enforcement, but there is a lot of confusion with that. It's also the same over in Destin. Well, we get people all the time say, I live in Destin. We said, no, you don't. And they said, well, look at my driver's license. It says Destin. I said, no, you don't live in Destin. You live in Miramar Beach. So there's, there is a lot of confusion with that. But, um, and I know there have been some times where people accidentally call the Okaloosa County Sheriff's Office or even uh, Bay County because they think they're in Panama City or they think they're in Destin. Now, never really in an emergency, but it has to get transferred back over to us. But again, if you dial 911, uh, it's even, uh, you know, your, your phone can be even GPS. They can pinpoint where you're at. Or if you call from a specific lo location and give them your location, uh, then, then obviously we'll respond to that, that location. So there's not really a delay in any type of emergency, but there is a lot of confusion with it. So just wanted to clarify that. Thank you. Thank you. Any more public comments? I'll take a motion to adjourn. Well, if, if I can just uh, respond to one thing that, uh, that uh, Ms. Nilsen said, her point number one about street signs, uh, I believe that is a subject that's going to be covered under the design charrette. I could be wrong, but I think, I think that's probably a subject they are going to address. So, okay. that's it. Anything else? I'd like to second your motion. Okay, I didn't make the motion. I'll make the motion. <laughs> we adjourn. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming out today.